Saxon Algebra. This is the Keys to Algebra, here we go, video. Um, students, by the way, let me just tell you who's here. Abby, Laura, Vivian, and Jayla. Class of 2021 from my algebra class. Dun, 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 dun. I'm super excited for you guys. You are more than ready to be launched. Um, by the way, let me just say this. The biggest driver of success for students in Running Start that I have seen, the biggest driver of success is that you want to be there. If you want to be at Running Start, you will succeed at Running Start. Students who don't really care or like their moms are making them, they're the ones that struggle. But any student that wants to be at Running Start will do great. So I have great confidence in you guys. I'm going to put you in a puffy cloud of knowledge because that's what you represent. Imagine that you are on like the Autobahn, you know, the expressways in Germany where everybody just drives crazy fast. Or if you've ever driven through remote states like parts of Montana or Las Vegas, or not, Las Vegas is not a state, Nevada is a state. Big open parts of the country. Imagine that you are tooling down one of those expressways, driving real fast, and suddenly somebody asks you to open the window and jump out into the car that is speeding along next to you. You're both going about 90 miles an hour, but somebody asks you to jump out of one car and into the next car. That is a little bit like what we're doing. Saxon Advanced Algebra, Saxon Algebra 2, those have been speeding cars down the expressway of your life. And you know, it's been a little wild, hasn't it? We have gotten a lot accomplished, but at a certain cost to your sanity. I recognize that you've been pushed. But now what I'm asking you to do is take a leap of faith with me, jump out of the Saxon Mobile, I know, and into the Keys to Algebra car. It's a different kind of car, but we are also speeding at a breakneck pace. So I recognize that what I'm asking you to do is a challenge, but together we will make it happen. I am sending you a schedule, a checklist for these next few weeks. I am emailing the document to your emails. Jayla, I'm going to send it to the um, family email where I always send Jackson's lessons. It's like the Judds, I think it's what it is. Um, let me know if you can't find it and I'll send it to you. But I'm sending you the PDF. I'm going to make notes on it here because I don't have a hard copy of that to talk from. Um, you don't have to take notes if you don't want to, because I'm just telling you what will be on that handout, but this is what it will say. Remember that the first week is the due date or the first column. I'm sorry. The first column is the due date. So the first date you'll see that on there is Monday, 426, because you don't have anything due today. We're starting the new program, right? Your old lessons, the last week of Saxon, are actually due today. Um, and then in the area that used to be lessons, I think it still says lessons, there will be four rows, columns, sorry, <laughs> said the math teacher who doesn't know a row from a column. Oh, that's so sad. Okay, it'll look like this, more or less. By the way, I chopped out the parent signature column because we don't need that one on this. I'll explain more later. Um, 426, lessons. And then it says KTA, keys to algebra, or key to algebra. Um, one, two, three, four. We have four books due next week on Monday, the first four books in the series. This is manageable. This probably you'll think is kind of fun. If you think of these as the time that you would spend watching the lesson videos and then doing the homework, a couple hours to zoom through these, that's probably about right. Down near the end when it starts to get a little bit more challenging, it might take you a little longer, but four days to do four booklets. Okay, cool. That's the first week. The second week, and those, so this is due at the end of the first week. 
The next set will be due at the end of the second week. Five, six, eight. All right, that's gonna start to get old, I kind of promise you. Okay, the third week, and you guys, we only have, we have three weeks and three days before I, before May 10th, and that's the, or 13th rather, and that's the day I want you to be ready to test. Three day, three weeks and three days. Three Mondays from now is 5-10, May 10th, and that's when you will have the last two booklets done, right? So then we'll start in on the actual AccuPlacer review problems um, in that packet that I sent you. And we'll do the arithmetic section. Each section, I think they have exactly 20 problems in each section. So this will be 20 problems. These are more like 30 pages. This will be faster, but this is the actual test. So it'll, it'll take you a little bit of time. You won't be zipping through these problems like you will the key to algebra problems. Then we will do the elementary algebra problems. Remember the sections, the math, AccuPlacer has three sections, arithmetic, elementary algebra, which is kind of like algebra one-ish, and then we don't have one more week to go. We can't wait until May 17th to finish. So notice the change in day. And I did put the actual days of the week on the checklist because it changes. So I want you to be really well aware of that. On May 13th, okay, so these lessons will be due on that Monday. Well, they're not lessons, but you know what I mean. They'll be all done on Monday. Then you have from Monday to Thursday, so three more days to finish up the college level math, which is the third of the three sections of the test. And then I shouldn't, I need to merge these cells. This will be loose ends and questions. Okay, that means questions. It doesn't mean I don't know. All right, that will get you ready so that on, and this is on your checklist too, as of Thursday, 513, you are ready to test. Okay, um, I don't have the details on that. It's online um, through the Edmonds College website. Um, if you haven't found it already, please do. If you can't find it, ask me, ask your mom, or ask Anya, whose number I gave you. Um, but you'll be ready to test. And then after you, t the, immediately following the test, you'll get your placement which will give you class numbers. And remember that those class numbers will relate, hopefully you'll be getting something like this. You'll be getting these numbers, math 141, 140, 146, 107. It'll give you a list of all the classes that you are eligible to take based on your results. So then you can plan your schedule as soon as you get those results on May 13th or whenever you take the test, then you need to get, so then you can plan your class and you can also um, talk to your advisors because you have to get okays from them. I don't know if it's a Zoom meeting. I don't know if you're just emailing documents back and forth, um, but you'll need to get a sign off from two advisors, your high school advisor and a running start advisor. Then, and you need to get all of the, the testing, planning your class, talking to advisors, that needs to be ready by Thursday, 520, so that you are ready when registration, and by that I mean class registration, opens. Okay, you can register to be a student at the college anytime. Um, Abby, we talked about that and I wanna make sure that you're clear that you can register as a student anytime. So please jump on that as soon as possible. Remember, that's the thing that I was talking about with the three week delay. 
Class registration doesn't open until May 20th. That's our target date. All of this is set up based on this date because I want you to be ready to take your classes. Um, as you plan your schedule and which exact classes you're going to take and when you're going to take them, I want to remind you that in terms of math classes, don't stop. Let me explain what I mean by that. Math, as you know, is extremely cumulative and it's a, a certain kind of thinking that's fairly unique. Um, it's not like history or social sciences or um, English where it's a lot of reading and talking to process the ideas um, or science which goes in lots of different directions. Math classes are cumulative and they flow and if you stop and forget that flow as any hum natural human brain does then when you go to start again you have to pick the pieces back up and try to remember how everything works you know how that feels even just from being the end of one year then you have summer off to the beginning of the next year we all experienced it a little bit of spring break there's a little bit of rustiness that comes in a few cobwebs you have to chase away imagine taking six months off imagine taking a year off please don't do it please keep taking math classes until you're done and then by all means stop. Three of my four daughters took one class, at, some of them took more than that, but they took one or two classes at Edmonds as juniors in high school, and that was it. They were done for their math careers forever. So please stop as soon as you can, right? I'm not telling you take extra math classes, but I'm saying figure out what math classes you need for what you think you want to study, take them all in a row and then be done. Don't create gaps in your learning because in math that's very painful. So if you test into uh, one of these nice math classes, let's say you test into Math 141, which is a great place to be, and you think, you know, I'm not gonna take that in the fall. I've worked really hard and I'm really sick of math. I am gonna take off fall and maybe winter, maybe I'll take it next spring. I beg you, please don't do that. Take it in the fall, grit your teeth, get through it, I will help you. These ladies will help you. I have a feeling you guys are gonna be all at the same, taking classes at the same level, which I'm really excited about. Um, and 141, by the way, is the class I highly recommend um, that you take. We can talk more about that if you have any questions, if you and your mom are wondering. But 141 is my favorite class. That's where I refer the vast majority of my students. I can only think of one who took Math for Liberal Arts, and that was Natalie Smith. Um, everyone else takes this class, this pair of classes, and it's, I've got lots of reasons why. If you're questioning this, talk to me and we'll talk about why you don't want to take it and why I think you should. But what I'm telling you is whatever you're going to take, take it in the fall. Don't put it off. Just be done with it. Okay, so this is our process. As you can see, it's going to be a little wild. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the keys to algebra. Um, booklets just a little bit and give you a sense of what they're all about but I want to say this and I think I've mentioned this to all of you I know I've talked about bits and pieces of this with all of you but I haven't told all of you the same, exact same things so that's the purpose of the video uh, weekly check-ins we're now going to have two I think I told you that there's no lessons to watch this is all review you know all of this you guys you know all of this so um there's no new material. I just wanna check in and make sure you're staying on track. Remember that it's gonna be, ideally, it's gonna be Monday and Thursday. And if that doesn't work for you, Tuesday and Friday, okay? Those are my ideal slots, um, noon to three. I will be available. We'll probably get into some kind of rhythm but I know I'm changing your schedule with all of this and I really wanna to talk to you twice a week. Twice, I'm writing it in big letters so you'll remember. You can take notes on this because I didn't write it down in the handout. Um, but it's really important, as you can see, the pace is brisk, we've got a lot to cover, you're gonna have questions as we go, this is the best way to handle those questions. Now, how are you supposed to work these crazy key to algebra booklets? Well, allow me Where'd my pile go? I keep them close at hand. Oh, here they are. I'm gonna take one from the middle. Okay, 
Notice that on the cover, there's a place to sign. Julie and Peter have very graciously provided this. Play. It says class, but I use that for parent signature. When you have finished the book, when it is 100% perfect, complete, and beautiful, and your mom agrees, then you sign here, she signs there. If you get a dad to do this, that's okay. But you know, dads, uh, this is not one thing I recommend for dads. It really needs the parent that's in the line of fire, your primary support um, as a homeschooling, you know, whoever is playing the main teacher in your role, they have to do this because it is intensive. Now, when you open it, I just want to point this out. There's little history stories here about algebra. Oh my gosh. If we were meeting in person, you guys, I would tell you about these because they're fascinating. But if you want just, if you're ever bored um, when you're doing these, I mean, ha, as if you'd be bored. But if you feel like you need a distraction, each inside cover has a fun little story about the history of algebra and I love them. They're really fun. Okay. But you're not going to waste time on that. You look at this and you're just glancing at this and you're like, okay, yeah, this seems really easy. I don't really know. And then it's, you can, what you can do is this, skim this, jump down to the problems, see if you can figure it out without looking at this. And then if need be, look back. You already know how to do all the problems in this whole set of 10 booklets. It's just a question of figuring out how are Peter and Julie asking you, how is this different from John, the way John asked you, and then making the leap. So you dive in and you just start working through these. Here are some polynomials for you to add. Oh gosh, okay. So we're practicing the idea of combining the like terms, blah, blah, blah. I don't have to teach you opposites, blah, blah, blah. You just keep going, right? And you do the work, again, skipping the instructions and just focusing on the problems, right? If the instructions help you, great. If they don't, don't. Um, a lot of times, Peter and Julie will work the first problem for you. They'll do stuff like this, right? Um, if there's a chunk like this where you have to fill in, do that. Like don't skip it even just because it looks like part of the instructions. Any place where you need to write, please write. Those are hard to find. Some students usually miss them here or there and moms find them. Okay, and then you go all the way through. Okay. We're up to 32 and I've got a few more pages here. Okay, then there's always a page near the end called written work. Do these problems on some clean paper. Okay, just grab a piece of paper and write them out. I'm not sure why they do this, but they give you practice of writing it out yourself instead of just doing it in the little workbook format. So do those. And then the last part is what I like to do together if we are meeting in person. Alas, we are not. It's called practice test. And it's a two page, one, two, it's a two-page document. They're not numbered, which I kind of like, um, that just reviews everything you covered in the book. So there's nothing new in here, but this is just a review. It's really, this is really useful and good because it gives you a final place to check and make sure, yes, I understand everything in this book, all right? So yes, you will do these practice tests. As soon as you finish the book, chase down your mom and go, here's another one, lady, and hand it to her and get her to work correcting on it. I told you guys this before, but I'm going to say it again. The very best way I know to correct, to flag a problem that is incorrect. P.S. You're going to get problems wrong. The sheer volume of problems is overwhelming. I like to use these flags because what you're going to want to do. Okay, let's say that I was doing this and I got this last one wrong. Not only do I want the person who corrected my problem. I want them to put a flag up here so I know that this page, I think I might be hiding it. I want them to put a flag here to show that this page has a problem on it. But then I also want them to put a flag underneath the actual problem. I'm looking up to make sure you can see. So that I don't have to spend my time looking around this darn page trying to track down which one's wrong. So this is really helpful. The flags I even like the best are this kind, the paper, the plain paper kind. These are the plastic ones that just have color at the end. 
those are cool. They're a little more durable, but this works really well, right? So then I can just cover up the, or under, I use it like an underline, right? That this is the one that needs my attention. This works really great. And then your mom does not have to buy $500 worth of post-its because once you correct the errors in one book. Okay, but anyway, let me just wait a second. Um, so then you go through, you find the tabs at the top, you go in, you find the problems you got wrong. It helps if your mom is sitting right there so you can figure it out, say, oh, it's this answer. She checks the answer manual and says, yeah, that's right. And then you can peel off both of the, both of the post-its. If need be, correct it, hand it back to her, and then when she has time, she can dive in and check to make sure that you got the right answer. But just like with Saxon, we have to work until we're 100% correct. I know, it's a lot. But that's how you that's how you get to college level math while you're still in high school, which is what you guys are doing. Don't underestimate it. Uh, um, a number of years ago, I think it was about 2010, when one of my daughters was testing, I went in with her and I sat and talked to the people who work in the testing office and the registration extensively about Running Start and how I prepare my students and the math test and all of that. And as we were starting to talk, I was saying, you know, I'm interested in figuring out more about the test so that I can help my high school students test into college level math. And they said, well, students only test into college level math after they graduate. And I said, actually, I work with 10th graders who are going into Running Start as juniors, and they have a proven track record of testing into college level math. And the person was like, that's unheard of. We don't get students from traditional high schools who test into college level math. It's unheard of. What are you teaching these students? I'm like, well, it's a delicious recipe of John and me, but we make it happen. So I want you to recognize that what you're doing is outrageously ambitious and successful. Okay, so anyway, sooner or later, you're gonna peel off these post-its because you'll get it right, and your mom can have a pile of them stuck to the edge of her table that she'll use when she corrects your next book. When both of you agree that everything is perfect, that is when you sign. And that's when you tell me my book is done. If you've gone through it once and your mom's in the middle of correcting, the book's not done. The book is only done when it's both of you agree it's 100%. And then you sign here and you kiss that little sucker and you put it on a table and you make a stack of them. And when all 10 are done, you may dance about it and scream. Or whatever you want to do. Okay. Back to my list. Okay, so that's the way those key to algebra booklets work. There's a bunch of problems, then there's quote unquote written work, and then there's quote unquote practice test. Do it all, throw it at your mom, make sure she sees it. The last thing that you want is for you to set it on some table and she misses it. So chase her down and put it in her hands and say, oh mom, mommy, it's time for me to ask you a favor. Um, and that is a process, you guys. These books are gonna consume your life for a while, but that's okay, it's only a couple weeks. Um, and then we'll be done with math because let me just remind you of this. Once you finish up and you're ready to take that test and you test into college level, you are done with high school math. And that means you and I don't have anything more to say to each other. Oh, it's kind of sad, isn't it? Um, I get so bonded to my students and then I just hand them off to college and there they go. It's lovely, but... Um, I am excited for you and whatever sadness I have is just bittersweet because I'm so proud of you and happy for you to be joining the club of my former students who did such a beautiful job. Okay, if at any point in this crazy key to algebra process you feel confused, let's say that the way Peter and Julie are explaining something makes no sense to you and it seems kind of familiar but not really, reach out to me right away because I want to um, help you make the translation. There is nothing in these books that you don't already know. If you've completed up through the red book, which is Abby, you have got all the information you need to complete these books successfully. That's why I want the twice weekly checks and so you can say, oh, there's this one problem that's driving me nuts, right? Okay. Skip the instructions, give it to mom as soon as possible. I'm looking at my notes. Use the post-its in two places, top of the page and under the specific problem. Follow up on your errors, sign off when it's 100%. Call me if you get confused. Okay, beautiful. 
Now we'll talk more about this as we go, but I want to just give you the lay of the land with this AccuPlacer. Sample questions for students. Remember that this includes the math tests as well as the English tests. So you might want to do a bit of preparation on the English side as well. They're all in here at the beginning. Sentence skills, um, blah, blah, blah. One of my daughters, bless her heart, um, the, the understanding was that for the preparation that my kids and like our social group was going through, they would have no problem with the English and they would be hard pressed to get into the math unless they really worked hard with me. Um, so one of my daughters was taking it really, really seriously and she slaved over those keys to algebra and she did her job and she got to that math test and she killed it. She did really, really well. But she forgot to study the English part and she ended up not testing into college level English, which brought her huge amounts of shame. We quickly retook it. Remember, you can retake these. We retook it just a few days later and she tested in and all was fine. But for a few humiliating hours, she had to face the fact that she was a genius at math, but she didn't even clear the bar with the English. So study the English too, is what I'm saying. All right, there are three sections in the math test, and they relate to these three topics that I put here. Arithmetic sample questions. And then here we go, A through D, they're multiple choice. Again, they're all things that we have studied. There's nothing new in here. It's just a question of making it the, connecting the dots between how AccuPlacer asks and how John asks. It goes up through 20 questions. Then we switch over to elementary algebra. Elementary algebra. Oh, and it tells you here a little bit about the way the test is calculated. There are 17 arithmetic. There are 12 elementary. I don't know that that's exactly true, but it gives you an idea of roughly how the test is designed. Elementary algebra sample questions. Here we go. Right? Up through 20. Here's a nice word problem. And then we get into college level mathematics. There are 20. I don't know that that's true, but I know that the three sections are definitely true. All right, college level. Um, and now we're up to five multiple choices. They make it harder in that way too. They will give you scrap paper to use. They call it scratch paper. I'm not sure I like that. But anyway, you, you can use paper. You don't have to just, because it's an online test, you know that. Um, even if you go to the testing center, it's online. Uh, okay, and so then off we go through to the end. Then there's a section here of ESL, which is for obviously people who are not native English speakers. You can ignore that. You don't need that for the English test. But then the answer key, look, my printer was going nuts this day. The answer key is up here. And you can see, well, you probably can't see, I barely can. Question number goes right down the middle of that column and then correct answer. There are the letters right there, okay? So you have all the answers for all three. Check as you go as if you were doing a regular Saxon homework, right? There's the college level. Um, do a problem, check it. Do a problem, check it. Do it that way. Keys to algebra is the only thing where we just work a ton of problems um, in a row without checking because it's just too much of a pain. Okay, so when you get to this part of the review process, here you have the answers already. Sorry, that's the English part. Arithmetic, elementary, algebra, college level math. I recommend that you do study them in order and I will say this, many times students have gotten back to me and told me that some of the questions on their actual test were the same questions that were on the sample test or very, very similar. So there is a reward to be gained by taking these sample questions seriously. And you guys, I recommend that you do these problems more than once. For sure, anything you get wrong, you're gonna to wanna to do multiple times, but as we're approaching the day when you actually take the test, you're gonna to wanna to review like an hour, a couple hours before you sit down to take the test, just to get it all back in your mind. You should be pretty well prepared at that point, but you're gonna to wanna to do that last minute prep. And I will remind you of that when we get close, but you're gonna go through those problems multiple times and that is fabulous. Um, okay, so that's everything I wanted to tell you about the AccuPlacer. We'll talk more about that once we get down to later in our process here. 
check-ins Monday and Thursday or Tuesday and Friday. We can mix them up if we need to, but I want to try to get it spaced out through the week, right? I don't want to talk to you Tuesday and Thursday because then it's five days for things to go crazy and us not to talk. It is perfectly fine if you want to work ahead of this schedule for whatever reason. You can go faster. That is absolutely uh, okay. Okay to go faster than our schedule. Please, I beg of you, for all things good and holy in this world, please don't fall behind. Please don't fall behind because we don't have much time. We have, it's a very tight schedule. Please don't fall behind. You can do this. If you feel your spirits lagging, if you get up in the morning and cannot face this drama, call me and ask for a pep talk. I swear I will bring root beer and Fritos to your house. I will beg your mom to let you sit in your pajamas all day. Whatever it takes, man, to get you through this process, I am here to advocate for you and to make sure you get it. So please, please, please speak up sooner rather than later if you feel your energy starting to flag because I want to help you succeed. We are so close, you guys. We are so close to, to just sealing this all up and tying a beautiful bow on your high school math career. And I want you to go out with fireworks and I don't know what goes with fireworks. Ice cream cones, I think. Um, I want you to go out on an extremely positive note. You've all earned that, and I want it to be really good. So there's my pep talk. Begin today. Remember, today is what, 419, isn't it? Monday? Yes, it would be seven days before this. This is a week from today, and these need to be done. These are your lessons due, right? So by next Monday, you want to have the first four books, not just done the first time through, but 100% signed off, complete and perfect, and you're ready to dive into the next four. Yay! We're doing it. If you are running into any problems, if your keys to algebra booklets haven't come yet, if your mom doesn't have a lot of time for checking your answers, if there's any drama in your life, please speak up sooner rather than later. And we will start our twice weekly check-ins right away. So you can check in with me later on Monday, depending on when you're starting, um, when you're watching this video, or you can talk to me on Tuesday morning, or you know Tuesday noon to three. That's fine. And like I said, it doesn't have to be the exact same days every single week. It doesn't have to be the exact same time. Um, but just make sure that you check in with me. It's only going to be a few minutes, you guys. There's no review problem or anything like that. We're just going to be talking. So it can be fast. And you can check in with me, you know, while your mom's driving you home from soccer practice or whatever is happening in your life. All right, I've run out of things to say. That doesn't mean I'm done. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I am done. I'm going to turn you over now to Peter and Julie, who are going to entertain you with the key to algebra booklets. Please enjoy. Goodbye.